that shed and sharing their love abroad throughout the region, throughout the state, and to all of our uh, out-of-state listeners, thank you so much for joining in with us tonight, another service. We appreciate you so much. On behalf of Sister Morgan and I and the entire body of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church, we greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What a privilege and an honor that God has smiled on us all over the world. He has breathed on us, and we're able to come together to share in the gospel and the preaching and the word of God. We thank you so much for things where as it is. Thank you for praying for one another. Thank you for loving on one another. Thank you for walking in obedience as we live out our life on this earth to bring God glory. We want to encourage you the next few minutes. We're going to have uh, one of our associate ministers. We're so thankful for the entire body of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and the ministerial staff. we appreciate everyone that support and help us to carry this great gospel and the gospel message of Jesus Christ, him who crucified on the cross, death, burial, and resurrection, who lives, amen, and ready to save, ready to forgive, ready to bring us into oneness with him. We thank you so much. I am going to pray in just a moment, and then we will bring our speaker in for tonight. We believe in what our founders have taught us, amen, to allow everyone to exercise their gift. What a wonderful thing to be gifted by God, called by God, chosen by God to do his good pleasure and to live holy and live a life where God get all of the glory. And I am privileged enough to be humble enough to allow ministers to come before uh, the peoples of God and lift us up in prayer. And I want to encourage us just before we pray and bring the speaker in for tonight. If ever been a time, as time is now, I encourage us, all of the listeners, especially the body of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church family. I love all peoples. I preach the gospel to all peoples, but I am held accountable at Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church to cry out. And Paul said, I beseech you by the mercy of God. I beg of us. Amen. I beg of us to uh, be thankful, really be thankful how good God is to us. Be thankful that he's blessing us and giving us long life and jeopardy. And I pray that we don't take it for granted. I pray that we would forgive one another. I pray that we would improve our walk with God and reconnect with family and friends. I pray that these things that are happening and going on in the earth, within the family, that it should be a sign. It should be a time that we would fulfill destiny as the saints of God, as the body of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church, that we would walk in obedience to the gospel and we would take it at heart. Thanks. I encourage us tonight that we continue to pray ye for one another. Not only just forgive and reconnect with family, but reconnect with God if you have drifted and your anchor didn't hold. We pray that you would hear the gospel and we would preach the gospel. But most of all, we would live the gospel that it bring God glory. Father, we thank you tonight for your grace and mercy. We thank you for things where well it is. Nothing escaped the eyes of the Lord. God, I know that you have 
been true to your word, and you always will be. Even in the midst of turmoil and trouble, disaster, flood, hurricane, we can have joy. Your joy is not based on materialistic wealth. Your joy is not based on uh, circumstances. Your joy is not based on how we're treated. Your joy comes from you. And in the midst of whatever's going on in life, you say our joy can be full. God, help us tonight as we enter into the service of the Lord. Help us to lay aside everything. Help us to put aside our business, whatever we got to do, and come into this setting. I beg of us to treat these service as if we was in the house of prayer, but in the presence of the Lord. We need you, God. Yes. We need you when things are well. We need you when we are well. We need you when there's no pain and sickness. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. We need you. If we never needed you before, we sure do need you now. You are present here in the time of trouble. God, look on the weather. Look on Mississippi, New Orleans, uh, hurricane that is brewing up. It's got a name. Every hurricane has a name. But your name is greater than their name. You have declared that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Oh, God, let these hurricanes with a name bow. Yes. Let these let these diseases with a name bow. Yes. Let cancer bow. Yes. In the name of, let diabetes, let, let, let uh, corona, even let death bow to the name of Jesus. Yes, and God, we give you glory to bless the word tonight, to heal somebody, deliver somebody, save somebody, forgive somebody. Restore somebody, oh God, that you get the glory, that the gospel have free course, and we give you glory and praise, and we call it done according to your word. We call it done. Bless the fellowship of pastors and churches. Bless men and women everywhere. Bless husband. Bless wife. Bring a reconnection, God. Bring a reconnection back to you. And back to family. And we give you the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Well, thank the Lord. And we thank God for each and every one. Uh, we pray that your ears will be in tune to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church tonight. We bring to you tonight uh, none other than Minister Dale Lewis will, will help us preach to you tonight as he come receive him. In the name of the Lord, that he may come and deliver the word to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Minister Dale Lewis. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Bishop Morgan, Mother Morgan, um, all the ministers and their wives and pastors and their wives, and all the listeners tonight. Uh, We do give honor to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church. I thank God for my wife and my family. Thank God for my children tonight, and truly you find me saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And we're so grateful and honored tonight um, to be able to just speak what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to share with us. And in the times that we're in, uh, it is a joy to truly know that I'm saved tonight and love the Lord and have a desire um, to just continue to walk before him and honor him and all that we do. And so we bless the Lord for our angel of the house, Bishop Morgan, and um, his humility and love that he has not only for God people, but for the preachers that, that, that we sit up under him and that as we become sons and daughters, um, and as God take him higher, uh, we, can't, we can't expect anything but to go higher. And as we go higher, that means that we're laying aside every sin and weight that, that so easily beset us. The things that used to trip us up by now, as we see our leader go higher and see the things that God is doing in the earth, we ought to make up in our minds tonight and say, Lord, would I do it yesterday? If it wasn't pleasing in your sight, Lord, it'll never happen again. 
And these are just the times that we're in. So, Bishop, we honor you tonight. Mother Morgan, we honor you. And all the preachers, uh, we're so grateful tonight. I believe with all my heart God has given me a word to speak to us. And if you will, let me just say a, a prayer and we'll get into the word of God. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you for being the Savior. We thank you for being the Redeemer of our soul. And God, tonight, even in times that we're in, when it looked like trouble is on every side, God, you're close to us even the more. God, we thank you for a leader that you have given us. We thank you, Lord God, that he has stood the test and God, while we um, honor him, we honor his wife, we honor his family, we honor all the men and women of God that you have in this hour that is still crying loud, sparing not and lifting up their voice with the trumpet, reminding us, Lord God, there is a Savior, yes. there is a Redeemer, and his name is Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that you saved us one day. You filled us with your precious Holy Ghost. And, Lord God, we love you tonight with everything that's in us. We ask, Lord God, that you will allow the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you are our strength. And you are our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I won't be before you long, but I do believe that I have a word tonight from the Lord. Um, if you will, if you would, um, if you have your Bibles or you, uh, however you, you have your word. Um, that's what we need in this hour. Our our leader always tells us, he, he give us four things. He said that if we would pray and read our Bible and stay in the service as much as possible and walk in obedience. Uh, these things will cause God to have favor on our lives. It will cause um, the enemy to stay at bay because we'll, we'll see some things coming and we can head it off. So tonight you'll find me in the book of Acts, the first chapter. And starting at verse 1, and it reads as follows. It says, The former treaty have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles who he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall, re you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The sixth verse says, when they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. I guess if I would use for a thought tonight, I would use this saying, don't lose your witness. We're living in a time, and the Lord shared with his disciples, he, he shared with them, and, and he understood the importance of having the Holy Spirit living in us. He knew that without the Holy Spirit, that we could not be that, that he had purposed us to be. So he declared unto them, he said, you're going to receive something that only I can give you. It's going to happen, and when it happens, this is what you're going to be. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to witness in Samaria, and you're going to witness in Judea, and you're going to be a witness into the uttermost part of the earth. 
He was talking to them because that was the the place that they were assigned. I want to talk and give you some pointers on an effective witness, and this is what God wants us to be in this hour. He don't want us to lose our witness, and when I say lose it, um, that means allow our light to go out. The Bible says that ye are the light of the earth. You are a city that sit up on a hill that cannot be hid. When we begin to take down as, as, as believers and begin to compromise and begin to, to, to allow the cares of this life to, to, to get the best of us, we're beginning to lose our witness. And the Bible said, I mean, said the, um, as studying, a witness is an informant. Uh, it is someone who sees an event and reports it. You know, when we look at from the natural side, there are many types of witnesses. Uh, you have a, a, a eyewitness. You have a alibi witness. You have a character witness. Uh, you have a material witness. And all of these are good in their place when trouble arrives or if you have been accused of something and you know that you weren't the one to do it. So these things play a great part on this side. But also I want to talk about tonight the effective witness for Jesus Christ. The Bible says that uh, our testimony um, it is by our word and or deed to our religious faith, a witness to the life which Christ has paid the price for us to live. When we receive Jesus as our Savior and we are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, that makes us an effective witness. I've heard people uh, in a, when I was young and I, I went to church and I, I'm sure uh, many of us have the same testimony and how they told us about the Lord, but they were really not his witness. And we don't, we, that's what we don't want to be in. We want to be the effective witness that Christ has called us to be on this earth. It says that when we witness for Christ, Watch this. He is the witness that live in us. We are vessels used to win others to Christ. I'm going to say that again. When we witness for Christ, he is the witness. That means that we are representing the kingdom of God as a witness to win souls for the kingdom. And we are the vessels he used that we may gain others. Well, you said, well, um, that's good. But I, I, I want to share with you tonight, God wants us to be effective. And to be effective, we got to be adequate to accomplish a purpose, producing the intended or an expected result. That means that whenever I witness to him, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, I need your help to tell them about the goodness of what Christ has done for us. And what is better tonight, saints of God, what is better in the times that we're in, knowing that you're secure, knowing, uh, like, like, like our leader has shared with us earlier, that it, it's not about uh, where you live. It's not about what you drive. It's not about what you wear. It is exemplifying Christ and letting others see. Even when, 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 when I think, um, well, no, I don't think, they shared with us about Bishop, Bishop Baker. Bishop Baker uh, had said that, you know, the only life, the only Bible that some people will read is your life. And what he was saying was, your life will be a witness to the people who will never pick up a book about this Jesus Christ that we serve. And when they see him, they, 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 they see the smile on your face. They see that we don't act 
uh, out of character. They see that we don't we don't we don't we don't talk like the world. Things that 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 used to offend us, it don't readily offend us. And why? Because we are His witness. And as we witness for the Lord, as we share with Him, share with others about what God has done for us. I want to share this. I want to insert this. I remember before I got saved and, 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 and my wife was stationed here and she called me and she said, she said, honey, she said, I've gotten back in church and I've rededicated my life to the Lord. And I said, yeah, that, that, that's good. But I said that out of not knowing and, 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 and not understanding that she had truly rededicated her life back to God in spite of how we met. She had made up her mind that God was better to her than I was. As an unbeliever, yes, he, yes, he was. You know why? Because she had a made-up mind, and that's what we got to have now. We, we got to have a made-up mind in this society that we're in now that we're going to love and live for God in spite of what comes and what goes. And so here, when I said that about Sister Lewis, she was she stood firm in what she said. She was so firm in it, I, 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 said, I said, well, that's fine. I, I said, that's fine. I said, but when I get to Montgomery, I said, you go ahead. And, and, and now I told you I wasn't saved then, so I, I, didn't, I didn't know Christ is my Savior. But, but, but I didn't know God was setting me up. I, I, I didn't know that, that not only did he use Sister Lewis, but he used another young lady in Texas the night before I left. And she was an effective witness, uh, uh, Bishop. She, she, she told me about this Jesus. And, and, and you know, because I, I felt like I was getting what I wanted. When I say that, they was, they was paying me this money uh, as I was getting out of the military. And I felt like I was getting what I want. I would have listened to anything. Because that's just, that's just how the, the, the human nature is. You know, you say, well, I won't see her no more. So it really didn't matter. But didn't know, Bishop, she was an effective witness. She was witnessing to me about this Jesus that I now know, the one that, that died for me, the one that, 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 that put her in my path to be his witness. And she was setting me up. And so my wife, she stood firm, and I thank God for her. You know, even when I didn't understand tithing, she stood firm. She said, honey, nope, you, you, you got to give. And, and I thank God for that um, because I don't have a problem giving in anything that I know God is a part of. When you are effective, it is life-changing. It leaves an imprint. It leaves an impact. You know, that, that's why, uh, you, you know, when, when we see, and, and I, I think I can use Bishop in this term, when, we, when, when other people talk about him and other people say his smile or, or his way, what they're saying is he's an effective witness. Don't necessarily have to preach, but his smile is a witness. His wave is is a witness. His, his his hug is a witness. His his just, just his character is a witness, and that's what God needs in this hour. So don't lose your witness. We are His agents to get this good news, this this gospel that He's still healing the sick. He's still raising the dead. He he's still opening blind eyes. I, no no matter what happens. Nothing passes through God's hand that he don't already know. No matter what is going on and, and no matter how this sickness has hit the earth, the gospel is still good news. And we who have received this good news, we got to uh, uh, we gotta fight. I, uh, Bishop preached a message several years ago that our faith is on trial. It is, saints. Every time we turn around, something is trying our faith. The enemy want us to throw in the towel. He want us to give up. He, he want us to, to fight one another. He want us to, 
to, to, to, to be at odds with one another. But can I tell you tonight, greater is he. Hallelujah. Thou not I say that is in you, then none of I say than he that is in the world. I'm, I'm talking about the witness that's in you, the Holy Ghost that he sent back over 2,000 years ago. Don't lose your witness. Don't allow your witness uh, to, to, to go out. Don't let the fire don't 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 let it down down. Don't let nobody throw cold water or or, or 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 green wood on your fire to where you cannot be his witness. We must get insight, and this only comes through the Holy Spirit to share with others the love of God. Oh, why do you say that? Because haven't you had people witness to you? I know I have, tell you about how good God is, tell you that, that, that you know, I, I had a, a young man the other day, he, him and I was talking about the Lord and talking about some things, and, 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 and he got away real quick because he, he, he said, uh, I, I like that song, um, uh, don't call the roll until I get there, and I shared it with him, I said, sir, whether they call the roll or not, we getting out of here. And, and and it ain't a question about getting out of here. The question is, where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Will you spend it in the presence of the Lord? See, that's real. That song, it makes us feel good. It, you know, I, I love I love gospel music. I I, I really do, but. But it works on my emotions. It, it, you know, we will cry, and we did that when I did that when I wasn't saved. But now that I have Jesus on the inside, He's my witness. The Bible said that when the Holy Ghost come, He will lead, He will teach, He will guide, He will He will bring all things back to your remembrance. Only thing God does. He uses the preacher to remind us over and over and over again until we come into perfection of what God wants us to be. He wants us to be his witness tonight. And not just a witness, but be an effective witness, producing a deep or vivid impression to where it's life-changing. I remember when some people witnessed to me and they told me this and then I seen the same one drinking on the church ground. It sounded good, but they were not his witness. It looked good to others, but they were not his true witnesses. I'm not saying they didn't change, but when we are witnessing for Christ, it is he in us that does the witness. We must be effective in our witness to many people. Too many people have lost their witness. They've decided that uh, everybody's doing it. Some have decided that it, 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 it costs too much. But can I tell you it costs God everything? It cost him his son. It cost him his life. But the good thing about it, he got up with all power in his hand. And then he declared, he said, I am he who was dead. But behold, hallelujah, I am alive. And that's how we ought to feel tonight as a believer. No matter what is going on, we are alive. Some circumstances, some family members, some, some, some co-workers, they may be dead, but God Almighty, you ought to be glad tonight as his witness, you are alive. You, you have life not only here on earth, but thank you, Jesus, you have life to come. The Apostle Paul reminds us, that this is just a race, similar to one training for a marathon. 
we sharpen our witness by studying God's word, by praying, by relying on him to be the real witness. We, we, we walk in obedience even when we don't understand. That's when you're his witness. Have, have, have anybody ever asked you to do something uh, and, and, and you know it wasn't right and, and, and you said, well, no, uh-uh, I don't care who it is. We cannot compromise because we understand the price that God paid for us. He paid so dearly. He paid a price that many tried before him. That's why Hebrews remind us that uh, he don't want no more dead sacrifices. He said he want us as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And watch this. He said it's nothing but our reasonable service. We're not doing anything so great to where God is just so amazed. It is the work that he did on Calvary for all of us. And that's why he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, I want to say this as I get ready to close. Um, uh, our daddy had, Bishop Morgan, I'm sorry, I apologize. Our bishop had been preaching. He just preaching just Lord Jesus, just reminding us as we have come back to the church. Priest message, uh, um, my mind is made up to live holy, um, letting us know that uh, we got to be transformed. And then uh, he, he, tell, he said, well, hold on. Help is on the way. And then he, he said, well, uh, do you want to be healed or well? And then Mother Morgan came and told us that we're to amend our way. He he's talking to the church, talking to us who may have become ineffective, talking to us and reminding us how important it is to stay on board. I want to encourage you tonight. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. If your witness have died, can I tell you, fan the fire. Get on your knees. Ask the Lord to forgive you. He will. And the Bible said he come quickly with his reward in his hand. And what better way to have a reward than God restored unto you, hallelujah, the joy of your salvation. You know, for a husband and a wife, I think all of us have have had points or or, or thought about it, and we don't want to admit it. So you know, I, I, I'll just, I'll just quit. No, don't, don't throw in the towel. Don't throw it in. Don't quit. Don't lose your witness. Don't, don't, don't stop. Hang in there. The Bible says, First Corinthians seven fourteen said, a sanctified wife or a sanctified husband. Thank you, Jesus will win that individual, never said they would get saved. We pray that they do. But if your life be the effective witness, the Bible said that they would be pleasing to live with. That means that whoever it is that, w that, 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 that will not or won't, for whatever reason it may be, will not accept Christ as their Savior. He said, look, I'll at least fight your battle. See, see, and what that's really saying, God is saying, I'll bless the home just because one of you all are honoring me. One of you all have sold out and become my witness. You got to have a dedicated life to the Lord. He says that we got to see Christ as a living witness to do right by each other, and, and, and it brings God honor. 
See, Paul, even when he was saying that, he never gave an excuse to say, you know what? Your husband ain't saved. Leave him. Your wife ain't saved. Leave her. That was not what he was saying. He said, because of your life, because of the life you're living and praying to a holy God that you serve and being his effective witness, God says some things I'll shut down because it can't go over me. Saints, I encourage you tonight in a poor way. Don't lose your witness. We don't want to be a character witness. We don't want to be an alibi witness. Guess what? Christ knew who we were before he went to the cross. He knew that Minister Lewis was a gambler. He knew it. But guess what? I'm not anymore. He knew he knew Minister Lewis would, 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 would throw away a lot of money. I, I'm just saying my testimony tonight because I'm his witness. He he knew he knew I, I would mess up a, a whole lot. He knew I would try to drink and, and I couldn't. He knew it. But thank God for Jesus. He knew what I was then, but he also knew what I would become. He knew I would become his effective witness. He knew that at 28 years old, when I didn't know it, others probably said he ain't on, he ain't on, he ain't on the mountain nothing. You know, he, you know, he, 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 he was nothing. He, he was just a, a little poor kid. But can I tell you, God knew. That's why he sent Jesus. And now that he's done that, why not be his witness? When you know and understand what God has done for you. When I look at how, even in January, thank you, Jesus, I could have been gone. But his love and his grace and mercy raised me back up. I I don't know about you, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he loved me enough to say, I'll go for him. I'll die. I'll lay down my life, Daddy, because I know one day he'll love me enough to be my witness. Bishop Morgan, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church, Mother Morgan, I love you all tonight. You all pray my strength in the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Bless the Lord, church listeners. Bless the Lord. What a mighty word from God. We certainly thank God for the word tonight, the preach word tonight. May we who have heard the word tonight, may we have heard it with our spiritual ear that it may bring joy and peace to us. I want to encourage the listeners and Minister Lewis tonight, a powerful message on tonight. And ministering from the book of Acts, encouraging us how important it is not to lose our witness. And not only lose it, don't lose it, is to be an effective witness. Many people, as he has preached tonight, no doubt that they are not witnessing, but to be an effective witness simply means there must be a change that go along with what you're saying. Glory be to If you're going to preach Jesus, it has to be a change to be effective that I live like Jesus. I suffer like Jesus. I forgive like Jesus. So the word was good. As I close tonight, uh, our founding bishop, John Sidney Baker would always, when he up preaching or before he give the benediction in such a message like this, he would say, as long as we're subject, Lord have mercy, to the Holy Ghost, 
as long as we're subject. And this is what we're dealing with now in the time that we're in. It is not corona. It is not death. It is not sickness that's causing us and many to lose their witness. It is simply that we're not being subject to the Holy Ghost, to that witness. The witness is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity. And when we don't obey and subject to the Holy Ghost, we will lose our witness. And Mother Baker, his wife, Mother Josephine Baker, would always be acknowledged before we leave any service the mother of the church, Mother Josephine Baker. And she would get up and just simply say, and I echo it for her, we have heard the truth tonight. We have heard the word. How much will we obey? Father, in the name of Jesus, stir us back to obedience. Oh, God, we will never be an effective witness for you if we don't walk in obedience. Help us to be obedient to forgive. Help us to be obedient in repentance. Sometimes we just have to ask forgiveness to be a witness to other people that I failed, but I got up. Yes. Hallelujah. My God. Sometimes we're an effective witness when we witness the people to say, forgive me. I spoke out of turn. I spoke when I should have been quiet. Forgive me. God, we pray tonight that somebody will hear the word. Yes. Maybe we need to be an effective witness and go back to our loved one and say, forgive me. Yes. Maybe a daughter that's listening need to go back to a mother or a father and say, I'm sorry. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Yes. God, we pray that we would take this word and hide it in our heart that we can continue to be an effective witness so we don't lose our witness. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord prosper you. And we look forward not only for the coming of the Lord, but we look forward to being his witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaritan and the uttermost parts of the earth. Be his witness wherever you at, wherever state you in. Wherever town you live in, whatever village you live in, rise up and be his witness and walk in obedience. God bless you. We will see you in Sunday service by way of conference call, by way of Facebook Live, by way of in-house service. God bless you and God keep you until the next service. God bless. Amen.